Hello, God bless you. Hope everyone's having a great day today. This is Brother David. Today we have a beautiful scripture about edifying. We're in the book of Romans chapter 14 verse 19 which says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. The Amplified adds it to the end of the verse, things which lead to spiritual growth. If you look up this verse on Bible Hub and click on the end of translations, to see the entire chapter, you will see that this section of the chapter is called, Do not cause your brother to stumble. We see in verse 13 it says, Do not judge one another. Verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And verse 18 says, For he that is in these things serveth Jesus, and is acceptable to God, and approved of men. And looking at our verse, edify means confirming or building up in other words instead of tearing each other down we should be building each other up this verse sums up what paul had written in the previous verses from 13 to 18 he is urging those who are strong in the faith to be willing to keep from harming the faith and obedience of those who are less strong in the faith for example believers should be willing to do without anything that would keep those who may be weak in the faith from stumbling into violating their own conscience. This willingness to set aside our freedom in Jesus for the sake of others is itself a service to Jesus. It results in peace and encouragement for everyone. Paul urges those who are strong Christians to pursue that peace and mutual encouragement by setting themselves aside for the good of their brothers and sisters. Paul's point here is not to give more legalistic mind the right to police the actions of other Christians because Christians do not lose their liberty because of the opinion of others. But rather, Paul's point is that they ought to discern the difference between exercising their freedom and abusing it. And in using us in the verse where he says, let us, Paul includes himself. Christians must do everything possible to make the Christian faith strong. A Christian must not do anything that would cause another Christian to sin. The church is often compared to a building, to a temple, a city, or a house. And the saints are the materials who are capable of being edified or built up, both by words and deeds, by the ministry of the word, which is set up for the edifying of the body of Christ, by praying with and for each other, and by conversation about the faith, but experiences of the grace of God, whereby the saints may be useful in building up one another in their most holy faith, and help from avoiding all filthiness, corrupt communication, all anger and wrath, which tends not to profit anyone, and are not for the use of edifying. Edifying is promoting by deeds and actions of charity, and love and truth, by serving one another with love, by laying aside the use of things indifferent, when disagreeable just think about it this way when you work out you may need someone there to spot you to help you in case the weights are too heavy maybe you need a partner to keep you motivated to keep working out or maybe to lose weight or whatever it may be sometimes we need someone there to help motivate us that's why it's good to be married to someone who's a believer as well because you can lift each other up in the faith and as well as lifting each other up in every aspect of life we need to be there to lift each other up, to help one another out. And this is part of growing in our faith. We grow in our faith when we read the Bible, when we get to know Jesus more and more through the scriptures, when we pray to him like an old friend, just tell him everything that's in our heart, how we get in his presence and worship him, how we share our faith and gospel with other people. But another thing is to edify one another. That's why it's good to be around other believers. You know, lifting each other up, being there whenever someone needs you, when they need somebody. So instead of tearing each other down for whatever differences we may have, whether it's a believer or not, this should go beyond just our brothers and sisters in Christ. This should go on to everybody. We should be lifting everybody up. That's a good testimony for people who don't believe. That's, that's one thing a lot of Christians do is they love to point the finger. And a lot of people who don't believe say, if that's a Christian, I want any part of it. But if we love one another and love everybody and lift everybody up and they're going to say i don't know what they have there's something special about them something i don't have and i want that but these things are once again to be able to have this peace 
to go in there with this peace and this love for them and to be able to love someone enough to lift them up in their time of need. This is not found on this earth. This is all given by God. These are yet promises that are given by the Lord when you grow in your personal relationship, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you walk in that faith. Because you can't lift anybody up if you don't have a strong relationship with Jesus. When you don't have that peace that comes from Him, the peace that passes all understanding. And why do they say that in that verse? It's because we can't explain it. It's, it's a peace that our world can be falling down around us, in our personal life, whatever it may be. But we still know we have this peace. We know everything's going to be all right. God's got this. You can't get that in the world. None of this. To be able to lift somebody up, to love somebody enough, to lift them up, to edify one another, that's given from God. If you don't have that today, if you want that today, then pray to the Father. Pray to God to give you this peace, this love to edify someone that you know may have maybe struggle with something. To be able to give you the words to speak to help build them up. But that's what we say, the first step. Is you have to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. So if you got this point of the video today and you don't know Jesus, maybe you don't want to know him, maybe you intellectually know who he is, maybe you're playing games with God today, you may know what Jesus did on the cross. But when hard times come, you're not running to Jesus for help. You're not seeking him because you don't know him personally. You don't take the time to talk to him, to pray, to read the Bible. Well, I believe that you're here for a reason. You're not here by accident. I believe the Lord has given you one more opportunity to get to know him today. And it may be your last opportunity. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. We could die today. This is why I want to introduce you to Jesus right now. I want to show you who Jesus is, what Jesus is bringing the cross, and what it means for you. So don't turn the video off. Just keep listening. Accept the words of the gospel of what Jesus did for you. Apply the words to your life and allow them to change you. The gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And sin creates a wall that separates each and every one of us from God. And this is because all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, which means... Because we sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There is a punishment for sin. And because we sin, we all deserve punishment. We all deserve to be eternally separated from God, which means a life in hell. But here's the mercy of God. God loves you so much that God sent his own son, Jesus, who left his throne in heaven and became a flesh and blood human. He was 100% fully God and fully man. Jesus on this earth lived a perfect sinless life. And on the cross, he became sin for us to pay for our sins, which means... When Jesus was on the cross, he put our sins on himself like a garment, and they died on the cross with him. Jesus took the punishment for our sins, because as I've said, there is a punishment. But we are the ones who sin. We are the ones who deserve to be punished. But instead of us being punished for what we do wrong, for our sins, Jesus, who was innocent of death because he never sinned, he took our punishment, the punishment we rightly deserve. Jesus took it our place. You see, we're all like a garment that is stained with sin. But when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you accept the words of the gospel, when you apply the words of the gospel to your life and allow the gospel to change you, then it's like you're put in a washing machine. You're washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. You're washed white as snow. And when you believe the gospel message and are saved, then you put on Jesus' righteousness like a garment. And now when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sin anymore. Now he sees Jesus. The gospel message is Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved and saved from what? Saved from an eternity in hell. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. Jesus is the door to enter heaven. There are not multiple ways that you can get into heaven and no one else can save you. A preacher cannot deem you worthy. Your mom or dad can't confess that you've been a good person. Your works, your deeds cannot earn it. Salvation cannot be found in anyone else or anywhere else. Salvation can only be obtained by faith in Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus' blood on the cross is a ticket. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. And on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. He took our punishment. And Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. Jesus' blood is what redeemed us, brought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from that eternity in hell. So if you sincerely believe in Jesus and surrender your life to him, which means you're not just saying words, not trying to please someone, not looking for a get out of hell free card, but you really do believe in who Jesus is and what he did for the cross, and you truly want to live from now, then you will be saved. This is Jesus' free gift of grace that he is extending to you right now. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. Just accept it today. 
Because you cannot earn your way to heaven. You can't be a good enough person. You can't do enough good deeds. And when you're standing before God, it's not going to matter how much you've given to charity or that you think I've been a good person all my life. I never robbed or killed anybody. Because our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace that we are saved through faith. It is not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works as he mentioned most. This grace is an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We don't deserve it, which means... We can't earn heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We don't deserve salvation. We don't even deserve for Jesus to come die for us. But God loves us so very much that by his grace, he made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for us to have fellowship with him. So accept Jesus' free gift of salvation, that free ticket into heaven today. Accept the words of the gospel that you just heard. Apply the words to your life and allow the words to change you. And we always follow the gospel with a dire warning of Jesus' imminent return. Because right now you can personally know Jesus for yourself. But one thing is for sure, the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. You need to turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today while you still have the time. Because tomorrow may be too late. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now why you haven't came to Jesus yet. Maybe you're waiting until your children grow up and move out. Maybe you're waiting until your parents are secure in your life. Maybe you don't think you're good enough saying, you don't know what I've done. Whatever excuse it may be. Do not put Jesus off any longer, because there is no guarantee that you will live to see tomorrow. And if you die before you come to Jesus, then when you stand before God, it's going to be too late to make excuses why to come to Jesus before. So turn to Jesus today while you still have the time. Today is the day of salvation, so if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of Salvation and a sample prayer, but these are just templates. An outline of what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me, and there are no magic words to be saved. In fact, the words are not even important, but if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer, a sincere cry from your heart that you cannot do this on your own, that you need a Savior. And what you're doing is admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior, in need of Jesus. You believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. You repent of your sins, which means you turn away from your sins. You're having a change of heart, a change of mind. Whatever you may be battling right now, if you trust in the Lord and let him. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept the words of the gospel, apply the words of your life, allow the words to change you, allow him to change you, and he can take away whatever you're struggling with if you let him. Well, I pray you got something out of this, but never take my word for it. And don't seek anybody's advice. Go to the source for yourself, because no one on this earth has the answers, whether it's the most famous preacher or the smartest person in the world. They do not have the answers. Only God does, and you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. And it is so very important to read the Bible for yourself, just picking random verses, doing a Google search list of someone read or preach for a few minutes. You won't get the full picture. They'll only scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. You see, the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, struggle, whatever hard time you may be going through right now. And in the description box, we have several links to read the Bible for yourself. The Bible is our roadmap, our GPS, our lantern, our flashlight. Whatever analogy you want to use, but you see the Bible will help you to navigate through this crazy, ever-darkening world that we're living in. So read the Bible for yourself. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus for what he's doing in your life. Well, I pray you got something out of this video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries. Or we'll see you in the clouds. Look up. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. Let's go.